Xenoblade Chronicles is a franchise that I've had a long and troubled history with. I may one day give my extended thoughts on the individual games, but today I want to narrow in on something that especially pains me about the series' evolution, the art style. At their best, these games have the ability to produce jaw-dropping visuals with stylish characters, awe-inspiring creatures, and gorgeous fantasy landscapes. Sadly, however, this appeal has been faltering in recent installments, primarily due to fluctuations in the game's overall art quality. This topic is definitely more subjective than I'm used to covering, nevertheless, I am confident in my argument, and in order to explain where I'm coming from, we have to return to the original Xenoblade game. No, not that one, the actual original released on the Wii. The general consensus seems to be that this version looks ugly as a consequence of its low resolution and relatively undetailed textures, an opinion that I mostly understand. Hardware constraints undoubtedly hinder the game's true beauty, but I feel that the art direction hiding beneath is more than adequate to make up for these limitations. It strikes a nice balance between realism and impressionism, incorporating enough cartoonish elements to help it feel stylish, while keeping it grounded enough to be somewhat believable. Much like the original versions of Twilight Princess and Shadow of the Colossus, I always interpreted the grungy and dirty visuals as an artistic compromise that ultimately adds to the game's aesthetic appeal, even if it was born out of hardware concerns at the time. Viewing the official character art for Xenoblade Chronicles offers a good idea of the artist's intent, and I find the in-game graphics to be a faithful recreation of that style. Xenoblade Chronicles X, despite the shift to a radical science fiction setting, features almost exclusively realistic rendering and texturing techniques to bring its world to life within the confines of the Wii U console. Though arguably not as unique as the originals, I find Xenoblade X's art direction to be an equally enthralling viewing experience thanks to superb creature and environment design that never ceases to amaze. Disregarding the reoccurring hardware issues like graphical pop-in, the only noteworthy artistic issue to me are the stylized human faces, which contrast slightly with the otherwise realistically proportioned human bodies. This brings us to Xenoblade Chronicles 2, where almost everything I love about the original goes up in flames due to a myriad of slapdash design choices, not the least of which being the absolutely horrendous character designs. There's a great video on YouTube that explains the problem better than I ever could, so to keep things abridged, I'm going to avoid that can of worms and instead focus on the primary issue ruining this game's artistic integrity, and that problem is inconsistency. During Xenoblade 2's development, many different illustrators were hired to design the game's massive cast of characters, and the stylistic differences between them are painfully obvious in the final product, resulting in a distracting mishmash of disproportionate characters with inconsistent body types and fashion choices. Expounding on this problem are the creatures and environments, which utilize relatively grounded designs and texturing not unlike Xenoblade X or the original. With some exceptions, the vast majority of character designs in Xenoblade 2 are expressly cartoony, clashing horribly with the realistically rendered backdrops. This alone is enough to kill the immersion, because no matter where I am in the game, I have to mentally distance the characters I see from the environments they inhabit in order to enjoy some degree of artistic cohesion. There are also many smaller issues related to this contradiction, like how metal, ground, and wood surfaces will naturally reflect and shimmer with light, while human skin and hair remain flat and unaltered, or the ugly motion blur effect which doesn't make any sense when animating cel-shaded characters. Combine all of this with an absurdly lackluster presentation in most of the game's cutscenes, and the result is one of the worst viewing experiences I've ever had the displeasure of witnessing. 
I could elaborate more on Xenoblade 2's poor graphical quality, but I think it's time to move on to Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, a remake of the original Wii game. Now to its credit, the Definitive Edition is a sizable improvement over Xenoblade 2, mostly because it painstakingly attempts to recreate the look and feel of the original. The big exceptions to this rule are the main characters, who for some reason now sport a clean and shiny look similar to Xenoblade 2's cast. I don't typically use the word generic to describe things I dislike, yet in this case I can't think of a better term. I'm not inherently against a traditional Japanese anime style, but I do expect consistency in the art direction in order to believe in the game world presented. And much like Xenoblade 2, the lack of visual cohesion between characters and environments in the Definitive Edition makes it hard to accept them in the same space. Despite the higher detailed models, animations, and textures, the Definitive Edition robs Xenoblade Chronicles of the subtle aesthetics that make the original Wii game so appealing to me. Of course, it is worth saying that none of this detracts too much from the overall quality of these games. No matter how much I despise some of the artistic choices, the graphics, to my recollection, have never actively ruined my enjoyment of Xenoblade's gameplay. And when I assess the Definitive Edition purely on that front, it does live up to its name. Graphics certainly aren't everything, but they do play a tremendous role in defining a game's identity. The surface-level appeal of video games has and will always be technology and pretty visuals. And shallow as that may be, it is the primary reason I was attracted to this series in the first place. Even if Xenoblade never returns to my preferred art style, I hope that Monolith Soft will at least begin to prioritize aesthetic consistency in their games. Modern consoles are much more capable than the Wii, so there's no reason why they can't output the giant spectacles that Xenoblade was once known for. I'll probably still follow the franchise out of curiosity, however I'll never truly love it again until I see the artistic ambition and talent evident in the series' roots.